Hi, it's your favorite rock and roll welder, Mr. Saltlethead, and I'm back with a new video on welding chains. Chains, all sorts of chains like bike chains, motorcycle chains, tow motor chains, timing chains, chain link, you name it. Well, I'm going to show you how I weld all these materials and behind the processes for each design that I make. Step one is to prep the material. We need to get this chain ready to weld. We need to get all that dirt and rust off. Now, one great way of doing it besides sandblasting is use a product like this, Blaster Metal Rescue Rust Remover. Now, there's WD-40, there's CLR, there's white vinegar, there's numerous other products that you can use, but with all those, you are going to need to go ahead and totally submerge all the chains that's, so we can go ahead and activate that chemical in there to help get all that rust off. Now, we're going to let this soak between 12 and 48 hours and see how it works. Pretty good job of getting the rust off. As you can see, for me, this is really rusty. And it actually looks really good. And that actually didn't even soak. It soaked for less than 12 hours. Um, this is the original. This may just look dirty, but hopefully it took off some of that zinc coating. But I will sand it down too. Same thing with this 3H chain. The original. And as you can see, I have a bunch of different chains, different thicknesses, and we're going to do some uh, functional artwork out of that as well. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little design here, and I'm going to start welding this on up, make something cool for you. When you're welding like an art piece and you don't want the welds to show up on the front of the chain link, what you have to do is you're going to have to weld it from the backside. Thing I like to do sometimes is you take a picture of how it's supposed to look. So you take that picture, and what you do is then you flip it. So what you do now is actually you'll line up your piece so that it's gonna match up. I'll do it quickly here. I'll give you an example. So when you weld weld this up. What you want, when you flip it back, you're going to have nice, clean, unwelded chain leak in the front, and it's going to be welded all in the back. So my welder settings: 124 inches per minute, 17 volt. You can go and take. A, now it can be just regular flat bar. It can be your you know different types of angle. But just a straight edge is what I'm, I need to do. If you don't want to clamp them, tack weld. Let's go ahead and get the angle that I want right here. I'm not going to weld this last joint, but make sure I get the angle correct that I need. When you weld the bicycle chain, since the, the link is so thin, you are going to angle your, your big gun. You want to angle it in the direction of the link. You don't want to be going off to the left or to the right because the material is so thin. And actually the bead is going to be about the, the diameter of the link itself. This way that's going to retain that curve. Like I said, just a cool little craft art piece. Now that this is all welded solid, now there's no weld marks on those chain links. What we're going to do is, when we weld these on up, we're going to try to get it as close into this little section here. And we can also just weld that solid. Like I said, if this is going to be facing the back of something, so we're not going to see the welds, then you know that's great. Uh, but if you need to, then what you can do is just start tacking 
inside here and then later on you can actually go through and weld up these links this way it, you won't have any weld look on the outside of it let's go ahead and get this set up now you are going to still have some oils in with these chains unless it's like a brand new chain but usually they are going to have some sort of oil in it so that's you're going to see this black smoke and even some fire what we're going to do let's weld all the solid and then i will clean up the weld smooth them on out See, that's, that's the oil is burning on off. Make sure you have a good insulated area that you're working in. If you have one of those uh, ventilation systems are great in my, between my garage, an outdoor area, it's a good cross breeze. So not breathing in all that bad smoke. All right, let's go ahead and clean this up. Still could probably clean it up a little bit more, but also kind of is a cool look to it as well. Still welded up solid. So if you want to get this chain nice and straight, once again, a couple different options, angle, some flat bar, square tubing. We're gonna go ahead and compress that piece together. Now you can either tack weld this angle here to your work table, or you can go ahead and actually just go ahead and, and clamp it. You weld every little link down through here. Simple method works for all different thicknesses of your chain, of your bicycle chain, motorcycle chain, a tow motor chain. Now, when it comes to chain link, you know, one way of doing it, it's got a bolt right here. I'm gonna use this as a, my main post. Weld this to my table. Line up my chain link. You can always tack weld one side of the angle and have the other one lo loose. So you can go ahead and be able to take it in and out, but your, your work piece is still stationary. Got a good place to work from. So now, it's all the links in the slot like I want. Make sure that my angle is nice and tight up against it. Pull this thing tight. So when it comes to welding this chain link, this is 3 8 thick. Um, I like to weld, now that's just a decorative piece, um, once again, I can go ahead and just do the one side, but this type of thickness, I always like to do both sides and make sure that there isn't going to be any any pull or flex or bowing. But it depends on the situation. But I will weld from inside here all the way through and down to there. Same thing with this side as well. And get all underneath and even on the back side. For this setting, so since it's 3 8 steel, I'm running at 320 inches per minute. 19 volts we're in about 157 amps now usually when i'm doing a mic stand or a, a sculpture typically with my mic stands i always leave like this this one link loose in case i do need to angle it for the except where the mic clip is going to go or if there's going to be another little prop piece on top it gives me a little a little play of what angle i might want that at so i'm going to start and this link right here now what I like to do is, is get the bulk in here and come down because this way I get a nice smooth weld versus starting here where it might be real thick and then thinning out over here. I like to start, smooth it out this way.
All right, so we did some straight pieces. What about if we want to do circular pieces? Well, these are a couple different options for that. I think some of the simplest ways is if you already have a diameter of uh, something that you'd like, for example, like this, this wheel that I have here, or if you have, give you an example, if you have a bucket and you're wanting to get in this diameter, just go ahead and obviously wrap around or we're going to be welding in order to get to that circumference that you're looking for. It's also all in, all in the design of how these links are going to be laid out too. So they're going to be laid flat like that, or once again, it's a little bit more difficult if you wanted everything, it's going to be on vertical. Obviously that's going to be, going to be more difficult to go ahead and do that. But let's just say for intensive purposes, we just want to make a circle. Okay. And we're just going to follow this contour. I want to make sure all the links are evenly spaced the way that you like and balanced. And just like we did with this is that once you get that wrapped around the circumference that you want, you are going to lock one down. Now that means tack welding one link. So we have something to pull from or be able to clamp down on this and then pull your chain tight. And then from there is that you just start welding like I did and the straight version. So I'm going to show you a technique of actually just welding some of this chain together. So sometimes when I go to clamp it on the fixture, uh, it wants to twist a little bit. So I'll just put a little bit, piece of a little flat bar there to get a nice bite so it is secure on here. That's secure right there. I want to make sure everything is nice and flush and tight around for this tow motor. And I'm running uh, 311 inches per minute. I'm 19 volts, so 035 wire. All right, here we go. Now when I am welding these, I, I am starting at a slight angle here, not to go directly straight down, because I don't want to blow through this initial link right here. Since this is you know, a double link, what I'm doing is I'm angling it, hitting here, pushing, tying this in, and then going more vertical. And then when I get to this other side, tilting back at an angle. So I'm pushing the wire and the weld pool back into this link, not to go ahead and blow it out and out this side. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, done. 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 All right, so now that we got some straight pieces welded, we're gonna add some round pieces welded. Well, what happens if you actually wanted to go ahead and actually manipulate and do your own contour, your own shapes? Well, this is one way that I like to do it. You're gonna need something that a link can go ahead and hang from. So what I like to get, microphone boom stand or cymbal boom stand. Cause that is what helps me be able to hang the chain from and then start welding and do my spirals from in order to get that type of contour. That's actually exactly what I use for this. I had the post in the center so I can actually start where I wanted it. I knew where the height was going to be and then from there I just welded chain link one by one and welded it all the way down wrapped around this post. Hey, 
cool. I hope you enjoyed this video. No, I did it for kind of for two reasons. It's, you know, for the, the season uh, welders is actually do something creative maybe they're not used to doing. Um, it's also for the amateur, the beginning of beginner welder or maybe the very creative uh, artist that wants to get into welding. Now, this is a great way to not only get your basics started, but also get, build your confidence on up so then you can advance into some other welding techniques and hopefully get that welding bug and continue on to your career. Hey, thanks for watching. Hey, if you have any questions, need help, or just want to chat in all things welding, head on over to our forum and connect with us at weld.com forward slash forum. Get exclusive content and member perks by joining our channel and support the Weld.com community. Until next time, inspire, empower, create, and repeat.